cluster Excel. In that lesson, we're going to discuss what is a cluster, uh, what checkpoint defines a cluster, uh, different types of cluster, cluster requirements, what you need to have to build a cluster, and we're going to touch a bit of uh, topic called synchronization, basically the mechanism that allows the traffic uh, to be synchronized uh, between appliances. All right, so we have firewall one and firewall two. Let's say it, it is a cluster. And right now the traffic is being passed through firewall one and the second firewall, firewall two, is just watching what is happening to firewall one to be able to pick it up. To properly define a cluster, we need to have three components. The first one is called redundancy, uh, meaning that your solution is redundant. If firewall one fails, firewall two will pick it up. Uh, all right, so, all right, it fails, the second device picks it up, easy. All right, the second thing you need to have, your solution has to be transparent. If you have to manually change routes, whether on the client machine or on your um, router to be able to pass the traffic, yes, your solution might be redundant, but it's not transparent. If it fails, if the admin has to do something, you lose time because basically, uh, admit it, like maybe uh, it might take you five minutes. You call an administrator, hey, dude, like you have to change uh, a route. It might take longer. Who knows? The solution has to be transparent. Let's say you have a virtual IP address and we're gonna discuss it a bit later in more detail how it works. You have a virtual IP and so you don't need to change routes. The failover is automatic and the second firewall takes over without any need to change routes on your router or on the client machine. This is how Checkpoint defines um, a cluster your solution has to be transparent to the client, to the router, to everybody. It has to be redundant and transparent. In the active-active scenario, uh, there is a thing that we need to have uh, to properly define a cluster. It is fault tolerancy. So basically what it means, we can balance the traffic between your firewalls, uh, between your firewall one, firewall two, you can actually have more than two firewalls in the in that scenario, in load balancing scenario. But the thing is, um, to define a cluster properly, if one device goes down, the second device needs to be able to pick it up 100% uh, of the traffic and not like crash because of that. If the second device is crashing, let, let's say they're balancing the traffic, but if one device crashes, that's not fault tolerant. That's just not the way we define a cluster. Okay, so we have redundancy, transparency, and fault tolerancy. These are the principles how we define a cluster. And if something is not like that, it's not a cluster. Okay, I think I mentioned it that more than enough. Let's go on. Two ways cluster can be deployed. The first one is called high availability. Uh, two technologies you can implement here in terms of high availability. The first one is VRP. It's called Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol. It's a common clustering protocol that um, other vendors use and checkpoints uh, can work in that mode as well. The second mode is called New HA Mode. Uh, it was designed by Checkpoint and I would say it's mostly used in a customer production environment. The way it works, we have two devices. One device is passing 100% of the traffic. The second device is being on standby. And if something happens to the first device, the second device takes over all of the traffic. It's being transparent, redundant, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you, you get the idea. All right, load sharing, load balancing mode. Um, basically, we split the traffic um, between our devices. We can have more than two uh, appliances or virtual machines as firewall instances. We can have three or five and split the traffic between them. So when we have, let's say, 100% of the traffic coming to our external interface, to our router, um, in unicast mode, the traffic is being split as 
30% to 70%. In multicast mode, it splits to as 50%, 50% of the traffic. Uh, sa same works for unicast, multicast, or HA. If one device fails, the second has to take over. In low sharing load balancing environment, it has to be fault tolerant. So it has to make sure the second device will take over and its CPU will not be 100% and will not be dropping any packets with any kind of error messages, but it has to be full tolerant. We're gonna go deeper into how unicast and multicast works. What's the difference between them? I'm gonna go uh, and discuss high availability and how it works in more detail here. We have two appliances. The first one is 10, 10, 10, 10. The second one is 10, 10, 10, 20. For the cluster to work in a transparent mode, um, it needs to have virtual IP. In our uh, particular instance, it's going to be 10, 10, 10, 30. That address has to be a routable and you specify that during the cluster installation. And we're gonna go through that procedure in the lab as well. Uh, so when we pass the traffic to our virtual IP, virtual IP has to route it to our active device, to our active uh, firewall member. Uh, that is actually uh, a name for the status, active device. It's passing 100% of the load and the standby device is passing 0% of the load. But the traffic is being synchronized uh, using CCP sync protocol. So we connect um, a cable in our sync interface on one device to the sync interface on the second one and the traffic is being synchronized every 0.1 seconds via the wire. If one device goes down, virtual IP, uh, you know, it, it can go down, you know, different way. Maybe the process crash, uh, something happens to the cable, machine crashes, um, or maybe an admin uninstalled a security policy, whatever. If that happens, your virtual IP uh, knows that the traffic, that that device uh, change the status from active to down and reroute the traffic for the second device and it becomes active and it's passing 100% of the load and the first one of course is 0% of the load so what happens to our device that became active during a failover uh, if that guy comes back to life uh, we can specify that in our policy it can actually stay active, you know, if we specify maintain current active cluster member, or we can click here, switch to higher priority cluster member, and we define a priority in a cluster members. So if we keep maintain current active cluster member, it's gonna be active, and that guy will be standby until another failover occurs. If we uh, switch to switch to higher priority cluster member, they will just switch to what it was before. That guy would be active and that guy would be standby. Uh, 